Six Characters in Search of an Author is a 1921 play by the Italian writer Luigi Pirandello. The drama centers on six characters who interrupt a play rehearsal to ask the producer to complete their story, claiming their author never finished the play for which he created them. While the producer and actors are incredulous at first, they become fascinated by the character's plight and are drawn into their crisis. Conflict emerges between reality and appearance as the characters and the stage company struggle to resolve the uncertainties that trouble not just the character's existence, but identity itself. The play opens on a relatively empty stage, where actors are arriving to rehearse a Pirandello play. When the leading man complains his costume is ridiculous, the producer shouts, ridiculous. Is it my fault if France won't send us any more good comedies and we are reduced to putting on Pirandello's works, where nobody understands anything, and where the author plays the fool with us all? The producer continues to ridicule the abstruseness of the play until the theater doorkeeper announces that a party of six requests to meet with him. A tenuous light surrounds the six characters who have appeared on the stage. Together, they make up a forlorn family, the father is a plump man of about 50, while the mother, wearing a black dress and widow's veil, seems crushed and terrified. The son, age 22, appears contemptuous of the other five characters. Although the 18-year-old stepdaughter is dressed in mourning black, too, she has a dashing, almost impudent beauty. The boy is her 14-year-old brother, and their 4-year-old sister is the child. The producer asks the six visitors to explain themselves. After disclosing that the author who created them failed to put them into a finished play, the father says the characters wish to live, if only for a moment, through the actors on stage. As there is no authoritative version of their play, the stepdaughter implores the producer to stage this drama for us at once. Although, the producer suspects these characters are lunatics and orders them to leave, he grows increasingly intrigued by their story as they begin to dispute one another's accounts of it. The father claims that after he married the mother, she fell in love with his clerk and ran off with him. The son, their son, was only two at the time, so the father sent him to the country, where he was raised under the care of a nurse. After completing his education, the son returned to his father's house, but the father says, he has, no tie of intellect or affection binding him to me. Indeed, the son's demeanor towards his father, as well as the other characters, appears hostile. The mother and the stepdaughter contest the father's testimony. The mother accuses the father of casting her off to the clerk because he had grown bored with her. Discarded by her husband, the mother lived with the clerk for 20 years, and they had three children, the stepdaughter, the boy, and the child. Recently, the clerk died. The stepdaughter, however, denies the mother's account, arguing that the mother and the clerk lived in peace and happiness together. According to the stepdaughter, the mother is tortured by guilt for having abandoned her two-year-old son, so she falsely accuses the father of pushing her into the arms of her lover. After the mother left his house, the father missed her and attempted to ingratiate himself with her children. The stepdaughter says that when she was a child, the father would approach her in the schoolyard and offer her gifts. When the clerk relocated his family outside the city to find work, the father lost track of their whereabouts. The mother and her children are wearing black because, two months ago, the clerk died. To support her family, the mother returned to the city, where she found a job at Madame Pace's dress shop. Behind her storefront, Madame Pace runs a brothel, and her motive for hiring the mother was to press the beautiful stepdaughter into prostitution. One day, the father appeared at the brothel, and Madame Pace sent him to a back room with the stepdaughter. At this point, the characters quarrel over what actually occurred at the brothel. The mother happened to see the father embracing the stepdaughter and shrieked. While the father maintains he didn't recognize the stepdaughter, the stepdaughter insists he knew her identity and wanted to seduce her. To resolve their dispute and determine the truth, the characters appeal to the producer to let them stage the brothel scene. Thoroughly absorbed in their drama, the producer agrees but stipulates that afterward, his actors will perform the scene again. They realize Madame Pace must be present to faithfully render the exchange, so the father entices her character to appear by assembling a collection of hats and other items in her shop. As the characters bring to life their encounter at the brothel, the prompter records their lines. The actors then take the stage, but their performance falls short of reality as the characters know it. After laughing derisively at the actors' bungled delivery of their lines, the characters reclaim the stage to present the scene properly. The stepdaughter and the father carry out their sexual encounter so authentically that the mother spontaneously shrieks, you brute. She is my daughter. Satisfied with the dramatic effect, the producer suggests the curtain should fall at this moment, and hearing this, 
a stagehand drops the curtain. The play's final act takes place in the father's garden because, according to the characters, the mother and children joined his household after the brothel confrontation. Following much disagreement over how to execute the scene, they decide it will begin with the son snubbing the mother's conciliatory advances. He then enters the garden, where he sees the child's body in the fountain and the boy, who stares at his drowned sister, with a mad look in his eyes. The boy suddenly shoots himself with a revolver in his pocket, prompting the onlookers to wonder if he is dead or simply acting. The stepdaughter, cackling, runs off. As the play ends, the producer cries, pretense? Reality? To hell with it all. In his 1908 essay on humor, Pirandello declares, reality is a continuously illusory construction. This conviction informs six characters, in which constructed characters seem more authentic than the actors, and uncertainty subverts reality. Pirandello received the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1934. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.